So back again, talk about Don Miller's book. Don Miller's book, Scary Close. First video I talked about just some of my personal experiences around his books and some personal interactions and, and why the book resonated with me in terms of him just kind of ripping the veil off and taking the mask off and, and him exposing his own journey of, of growing into his true self because it's true about all of us. That's what we're doing. Second video I talked about family of origin issues and how they've shaped us and how anxiety drives a lot of that. Right? And now the, the other critical piece of the book that I love is Don gets to this piece about really es essentially is that we are dependent um, to work on fixing ourselves. I mean, it's not the right phrase. We have to not be dependent upon how other people think about us or feel about us, but again, try to anchor ourselves and be dependent upon that true sense of who we are, that true version of who we are. So for example, a lot of times people get in married or they get in relationships and who they are or how they feel about themselves is dependent upon if their spouse is happy with them that day or if they're in a good mood or if things are, are good. And if they're not, and to the degree that they're not, then, then they get stuck in this kind of fused relationship that's dictated by the whim of the other person. That's a real enslaved place to live. And, and Don talks about how ultimately uh, our spouse isn't responsible to make us happy or to fix our happiness or to make us feel better about ourselves. That's not the role of a spouse. And he says here in, in page 210, which I love, I'll use his words instead of mine. I'm responsible for my own health and happiness, and I'm responsible to ask what I want in relationship and try to make the middle pillow comfortable and safe for her. But that's it. The middle pillow, by the way, is an example, if you read the book, of, of, of something he learned about kind of creating space in the middle between people. He says, I've come to believe a person's love for you can't grow unless you hold that person in your palm loosely. And essentially, Don is talking about this idea that is you know, talked a lot about in the psychological literature and the marriage world of self, self, uh, self differentiation. That how do we differentiate ourselves in relationship to other people? How do I know where I begin and end in relationship to you? Essentially, it's a boundary. It's, it's, all, it's a boundary in a lot of different ways. And a lot of times people get in relationships and they lack boundaries and who they are is dependent upon their spouse fixing them or making them feel happy. In, in fact, a lot of times I'll tell my wife or I'll talk to people about, I think early on in my own marriage, um, I had such a, a neediness to want my wife to um, make me feel good about who I was or validate me or affirm me that essentially she was kind of just having to prop me up in the relationship. And that's exhausting for a spouse to have to prop the other person up. But when I began to work on my own issues and go to counseling over an extensive period of three years, I began to, in my opinion, probably become more self-differentiated. And she was able to kind of not let go and not do that. And it was able to create space in our marriage and relationship for us to, to encounter each other in our true selves, out of our true sense of who God created us to be. And, and Don really drives that point home, that there's this idea of, um, again, we live in a culture of sort of this Jerry Maguire, you complete me, right? Or I think a lot of times in the Christian world, unfortunately, we talk about when we say the two become one, we often, I think, mistakenly assume, well, if we're one, then who I am is dependent upon you and how you feel about me. Are you making me happy? That's your job. And, and, and that's, not, that's not what it's saying there, right? We are one, but God has created us both unique, right? and with our own gifts, our own sense of identity, our own sense of truth, and he's calling that forth out of us and calling two people to come together and to create space and allow space for two people to meet each other out of their truth. And, and Don talks about that a lot, and I think it's not until a person gets to their truth and operates out of that that they can have often a healthy relationship. Not a perfect relationship, because who lives in their truth forever? We have difficult times, we have conflict. Again, bringing up the work of Terry Hargrave, who I mentioned earlier, he talks about Again, the pain cycle, that negative feeling and coping pattern. He talks about that living out of your truth and that um, those actions and strengths that pour forth out of that as your peace cycle, right? And again, to put it to kind of in my own mind, the biblical terms, there's this old self we live out of, but there's this new self that is being restored constantly. And the goal is not to be perfect, but what would a relationship or a marriage look like if Maybe the majority of time, whether that's five out of ten times or six out of ten times or whatever, that when we experience conflict coming on or we're in a relationship, we're able to be so aware of our negative coping pattern, our pain cycle, that we're able to kind of ground ourselves, center ourselves, anchor ourselves in that truth and operate out of that. That'd be transforming for any relationship. 
And other times where we just can't quite get together and we're just stuck, right? That at least we have enough awareness that we can go back and heal that wound and, and talk about it and get a, sense, get a sense of forgiveness around that issue. Again, that's, it's, a, it's a huge piece. This whole idea of self, self, uh, self-differentiation, I think, is really, really big. And to me, it was probably the, the most powerful component to stem out in the entire book. Because I think it separates it from a lot of other literature out there on marriage, especially if it's around uh, Christian circles and stuff. Um, I was going to read a quote, actually, by a couple of poets that I love that kind of hint at this idea of self-differentiation. One is by the poet... Um, I'm going to say his name wrong. I say Rilke, but Reichel or Rilke is often said. But he says, love consists in this, that two solitudes protect and border and salute each other. That two solitudes protect and border and salute each other. It's kind of this idea of space and self-differentiation. When there's no space, we don't allow for the other person to be who they are. Right? They get smothered out. They get fused. Or the Lebanese poet, who I really like, um, Khalil... Khalil Gibran, if I'm saying that right, in his book, The Prophet, under the section on um, marriage, he says, and stand together, yet not too near together, for the pillars of the temple stand apart, and the oak tree and cypress grow not in each other's shadow. Kind of this idea of creating space. And that's where I think the beauty and the magic occurs in a relationship, is that when two people stand together in their truth and create space, it's in that space that we experience the freedom to want to give freely to our relationships and do want to do the things that our relationships um, deserve or that our spouse deserves. Um, I think that's where the magic happens and the, the real beauty. And, it, and for me as a Christian, it allows it's that space where God, I think, does amazing work in a couple's life. So thanks for joining me today and hope you enjoy the next video.